Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about a concept that is core to risk management and business continuity, the Business Impact Analysis, or BIA. The BIA really is central to the work performed by cybersecurity and risk managers, so it plays a very important role on many certification exams. In short, a business impact analysis identifies the business processes and tasks that are critical to an organization and the threats posed to those activities. The BIA also assesses the likelihood that each threat will occur and the impact those occurrences will have on the business. The results of the BIA provide you with quantitative measures that can help you prioritize the commitment of business continuity resources to the various local, regional, and global risks facing your organization. Now, there are many different ways that you can go about a business impact analysis, and as long as you achieve the end goal of identifying the risks that might impact your operations, you can take any one of those paths. In this video, I'm going to walk you through one common approach that uses five steps. We'll dive into each of these steps in detail in just a moment, but here's the big picture. Step one is identifying business priorities. Step two is identifying risks. Step three is assessing the likelihood of those risks, while step four assesses their impact. And finally, step five prioritizes the use of resources. So let's begin with step one, identifying business priorities. Depending on your line of business, certain activities are essential to your day-to-day -day operations. In the first step of the BIA, you create a comprehensive list of critical business functions, and then you rank them in order of importance. Now, this task can seem a little overwhelming, but it's not as hard as it sounds. Critical business functions will vary from organization to organization based on the organization's mission. They are the activities that, if they were disrupted, would jeopardize the organization's ability to achieve its goals. For example, an online retailer would treat the ability to sell products from their website and fulfill those orders promptly as critical business functions. A great way to divide the workload of this process among your team members is to assign each participant responsibility for drawing up a prioritized list that covers the business functions in their own department. Then, when the entire team gets together, team members can use those prioritized lists to create a master prioritized list for the organization as a whole. Now, one caution with this approach. If your team is not truly representative of the organization, you may miss critical priorities. Be sure to gather input from all parts of the organization, especially from any areas that are not represented on your team. When we get to step two, it's time to identify the risks to your business processes. During this phase, you'll have an easy time identifying some common threats, but you may need to exercise some creativity to come up with some of the more obscure, but very real, risks. Risks come in two forms, natural risks and person-made risks. Natural risks include anything that happens as a result of the natural environment. That's everything from weather events like a blizzard, tornado, or lightning strike to a movement of the earth, such as an earthquake or volcanic eruption. We all experienced one natural risk very vividly during the coronavirus pandemic. Person-made risks are anything that happens because some person took an action. This might be an employee making an error when configuring a system, an intruder breaking into our facility, armed conflict breaking out, or technical disruptions to our systems and services. We could spend hours making this kind of list. The bottom line is that person-made risks include anything that happens outside of the world of natural events. Now those are the first two steps of the BIA, and we still have three more to cover, but before I do that, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. Those plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying the Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. Step three brings us to assessing the likelihood of those risks. Basically, we need to figure out how often each of those risks is likely to occur. 
We document this using a metric called the Annualized Rate of Occurrence, or ARO. That's simply the number of times that a risk typically occurs each year. For example, if we expect a heavy rainstorm three times a year in our area, the ARO would be three. On the other hand, if we expect an earthquake once every 25 years, that would be an ARO of 1 over 25, or 0.04. We also use quantitative measures in step 4 to assess the impact of a risk. Here we try to figure out how much damage is going to occur each time that a risk materializes. That's the Single Loss Expectancy, or SLE. We can use the SLE and the ARO to compute the Annualized Loss Expectancy, or ALE. The ALE is the amount of damage that we expect a risk to cause in any typical year. That's something we measure in dollars. Now, that was a lot of metrics. We just talked about the Annualized Rate of Occurrence, the Single Loss Expectancy, and the Annualized Loss Expectancy. All of those terms and more are part of a process called quantitative risk assessment, and you'll want to know how to calculate them when you take a cybersecurity certification exam. I'm not going to go into the math in detail here because I have a whole separate video on that topic. Be sure to watch my CertMic Explains video covering quantitative risk assessment. The fifth and final step of the business impact analysis is resource prioritization. During this step, you prioritize the allocation of your time and business continuity resources to the various risks that you identified and assessed in earlier phases of the BIA. And from a quantitative point of view, this process is fairly simple. You just create a list of all the risks that you analyze during the BIA process and sort them in descending order according to their annualized loss expectancy. That provides you with a prioritized list of the risks that you should address. Select as many items as you're willing and able to handle simultaneously from the top of the list and work your way down. Eventually, you'll reach a point at which you've either exhausted the list of risks or you've used up all of your available resources, which is much more likely. I hope this video helped you understand business impact analysis. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.